Hi, this is Jacob Bull for the ESPN.com and The Undefeated. I'm joined by Hungrybox of Team Liquid, uh, EVO champion for 2016. How does it feel to be back at EVO? Well, I'm finishing up my victory lap, and it's good to be back in like the same building where it all happened, pretty much. And uh, it is good. There's like a, a fire in the air. A lot of people here are, like really wanting to compete at the top level. It's all best of three, so everyone's making sure to play a lot, stay warmed up, and. You know, I got my whole posse here, so you know it feels good. I'm having fun. I'm pretty zen right now because I play at six o'clock, and it's only round one pools. But tomorrow is, in my opinion, like the single hardest day of any melee tournament in the history of the game. It's like top 256 with uh, pretty much a majority of the best players in the world all in one room and best of three. So you got to have stamina and you got to have nerves of steel to get through this. And um, I'm just hoping it goes as well as it did for me last year. How do you prepare yourself for like a gauntlet like that where you have to do all of that in one day and then by like 8 o'clock in the evening you have to play top 8? I mean, you look at the characters that you're going to play against. For me, it's mainly Fox, so it keeps it pretty simple. But um, you just got to stay energized, drink a lot of Monster, uh, a lot of coffee, whatever you need to do, and uh, don't overstretch yourself out. You know, don't walk around, don't do too many things, and you have to like stay low key. You know, with, with a tournament of this much stamina for tomorrow, I might like stay sort of in the, in the background, like behind the curtains, not really interacting with fans too much, just because any bit of energy that I have was going to be reserved for the tournament. Yes. So just got to save it all for, the, for the, big, the big kahuna, pretty much. You and I were talking earlier, and you talked about being three for three with Louis uh, since you guys kind of changed up some strategy. Um, for those kind of unfamiliar with what you're doing, can you kind of explain? Um, basically, Lewis Crunch is my coach, and um, any, every time he goes with me to a tournament in the summer, we've won uh, three, three big ones so far. We won DreamHack Austin, we won Smash and Splash, and we won uh, Bad Moon Rising. Um, and CEO. And CEO, thank you, yes. Uh, so 4 for 4 actually, I guess, four in a four. sense. Okay. Um, so, you know, he's, he's just there. He always knows how to tell me how to warm me up. He always knows what I'm, do what I'm doing wrong. And he, even if certain tournaments ban mid-set coaching, between the sets, between the actual, like, where I go from one part of the back to the other, he'll sit down with me and we'll play. And so, like, okay, you know, I realize you're forgetting this, you're doing this, you're falling into this habit. So he's really good at picking up. And, you know, without him, I would have never thought I was falling into bad habits. To me, a win is a win. But he says, you know, even if you won, you still, it might have been a bad win sort of thing. So he just cleans up everything that I have, all the slop that I have. And we innovate and just keep good mindset, play good melee. You know, that's what, he, that's what he's there for. He knows how to beat me, which is the most important thing. I think a coach, a coach should be able to beat his, uh, his person that he's coaching. And he, he, can, he can usually beat me on a good day. So he always knows uh, where my flaws are. And he knows how to spot them. So with the four, four tournament streak uh, that you're on right now, uh, with the four tournament streak, there, there is no one besides Mango to ever win back-to-back -back EVO events. Uh, there's no one to win more than one EVO events when it comes to Melee. Um, is, is that added pressure to think that you're on this four-person four, four streak, you are arguably the favorite coming into this tournament, uh, you and Armada, and now the pressure's on that you could make history yeah. and be the second Melee player to do it twice. Yeah. Do you feel that? I feel it a little bit, but it's just, it comes down to this ultimate pettiness. I just really want to just, if I get the three vote before he does, I want to just rub it in his face for the rest of his life, like for the rest of his life, for as long as I know him. I think that'll be really funny. Just for, just for, the, for the meme, for the culture. Totally worth. <laughs> so last year you had the the emotional breakdown that was uh, that and Li Joe kind of like stole the show of Evo. Yeah. Um, thinking back on that feeling, what did that mean to you, and how how would that compare to this year if you did it again? Um, if I did it again, I, I think nothing will top that moment from last year, and just how like just honestly miraculous it was, and just. The, the amount of people watching, the amount of support I got, I know that was a, that's going to be the, pick, the peak of my melee career and probably for the, you know, for the, the rest of my life for how long as I play. But if I did it again, um, the fact that I won last year and went back to back will add on to the legacy itself. Maybe the moment itself won't be as, as notable. It all depends on how the games play as well. The history of melee comes in how the games are played, not necessarily the story surrounding it. It's the actual, you know, what buttons were pressed at what time and how did it happen. That's what the really, you know, fascinating part is. But uh, you know, we just we're just so as a community really happy to be at Evo. I just I love to be part of this. I love to share part of it. I it's an honor to have been part of the past four top eights here at Evo. You know, I, I still am playing you know to my level. I'm still happy, and I just want to do it for as long as I can because that's honestly it's, it's a magical magical thing that I'm doing, and I, I love it every second of it. Yeah. So it feels like in comparative to last year with these tournaments this year is that there are a lot of changes uh, to everyone below like the top six in Melee. There are a lot of people that are a lot better this year that weren't last year. How do you think the landscape for your competition has changed? Um, yeah, and the, the top 10, top 20, all the rankings just came out with ESPN uh, or uh, with Red Bull, I'm sorry. but. Um, 
when I look at the rankings, I notice that the top six are really locked in. You know, like, it's like, like I said, it's, it's very hard to change who's in that exclusive group. Whereas seven through 10, those change, they shifted a lot. We have Chudat and Wizzy now in the top 10. And then some players who are really good are now in top 20, dropping, going up and down. It's really volatile the lower you go in the rankings because like to surpass that certain level, that plateau, that consistency, it really takes just a, every bit of brain strength that you have. And some people just aren't capable of it, you know? But some people are. I think some people are going to get into it. I think I, I can see Drug Fox getting in the top ten, but uh, by the, maybe top eight, you know, by next year. I could see just, you know the gods are kind of remaining in place, but it all depends on who can figure out. Because in my opinion, to beat like the gods of melee, you don't only have to have everything on lock and matchups, all the knowledge you need, all the tech yeah. skill. You need to be able to innovate, and I think that's what the demigods are lacking to get from a demigod level to a god level. Like truly innovate and create game-breaking tech on the spot while you're playing them. Stuff we've never seen before is how we're going to lose. Uh, I think. You talked about uh, the Miam rankings. Um, last year you got second, even though you won EVO. Uh, you got <laughs> second in the Miam rankings. And a yeah. lot of the criticism around you was lack of consistency after EVO. Yeah, yeah, um, I, I kind of fell apart the uh, second half of 2016. I didn't know how to handle the win, and I, I had moved to Alabama right after EVO for, for work, and that really just completely destroyed my entire momentum. And I, stopped, I, I went out of practice, and it just all fell apart. It was really disheartening. It's part of the reason I quit my job, actually. So before we kind of dive into the thing about your job, the question I had is that now you are achieving that consistency. Um, yep. You are you're becoming consistent at the beginning of part of this year, coming into this tournament, um, and you're making a case for yourself that you could actually be the first person to, or you could be first in those rankings this year. Uh, what do you think you need to do to keep the streak of consistency and keep it throughout the rest of the year, even past this event? To be honest, when I get in the top eight now, I give Lewis my phone. I said, do not give me my phone to the end of the tournament. I, if I just get all the other outside opinions of what I'm doing away from me and just play literally only me and pretend it's the 80s and pretend there's no social media, pretend there's no crazy people like trying to tell me what to do or how I should play or how I should live my life or critique, if I just play for me and the people who I care about, I think I could be unbeatable. So it just depends on, the, on that clarity, and I need to have that clarity to win. So I'm feeling pretty clear right now. Yeah. You mentioned that you quit your job. Uh, yeah. You've gone Smash full time streaming, but you also um, you're in the top echelon in terms of, of salaries and, and, and being able to sustain yourself off of this game. Um, how has it been transitioning from from trying to balance work and Smash versus just being so committed to it now? It's a lot less stressful, I would say. It's just like when I had work, at least I had another stable income where I was like, even if I lose the tournament, I still have money coming from work. And if I was only Smash with not like the not the support of Liquid, it would still be stressful because I I'd never want the majority of my income to be, come from winnings. Um, if I have a good year, that's the case only by default. But like even now, uh, you know, as long as Melee is relevant, as long as I'm playing well, you know, Liquid is supporting me full time. Uh, I recently purchased a home with my girlfriend. You know, it's just a, it's, a, it's the blessings I'm getting from esports. Are honestly, amazing. Uh, and I want Melee to last as long as possible. And I've heard people tell me that you know I might be one of the reasons that Melee you know dies earlier than expected, which I really hate hearing because I think there's a lot more to Melee than just one person's or a group of people's opinions on one person's playstyles for a spectator event. You know, there's it, Melee is so diverse. There's so many playstyles and approaches and ways you can beat things that which are previously thought unbeatable and just like different cultures of the game just interacting with one another there's all there's an infinite depth to it and i don't think any one specific play style whether it's wobbling or grabbing the ledge or you know do, using certain infinites or using top tiers i don't think that's really going to affect like the overall what melee means to everyone you know what i mean and i think god willing we have another 10 years in us so we'll see what happens this could be the year of hungry box. This could be the year that you you achieve first in those rankings. It could be the year that you become the most consistent player in melee. How do you do that? Armada, beat Armada. Uh, I beat him at Smash and Splash final this year, which I'm, I'm super happy I did because I, I proved myself that I can do it. Armada, he's uh, clear number one this year so so far, but um, he's gone to I think four or five big events that he's won. I've been attending a lot more events, not that he's at, but I've been attending a lot more events right. and winning all the ones that he's not at, apart from I think uh, 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 CEO Dreamland. I think was the one I didn't win. I want one more, but I've been showing them consistent, and I really want all the packs I can get. And it's, it's my full-time job, so I feel like a responsibility if I'm number one ranked in North America to travel to all these North American tournaments. But um, I'm really excited to play him here if I get to match up with him. And uh, I just need to beat him and Mango consistently. I think if I beat Armada at this tournament and maybe one more, I think the throne, I think the throne goes back to me. I think we have a rule of three, a rule of three, like in the Smash community. It's like an unwritten rule. Like if Armada beats me three times in a row, like he takes it. If I beat him three, three times in a row, I take it. Uh, that's why last year I had Battle of the Five Gods. I had Evo. Um, I think I lost one in between. 
But it was still, even after Evo, it was like pretty much tied. But then he came out on top. He's just more consistent this year, but um, last year. But I want to do it. I want to push myself to the upper limit. I'm not stressing if I don't get the number one ranking. That's not like my goal anymore. I just want to play the best melee I can play and make sure I have no barriers to do that and then see what happens. All right, well, thank you for the interview. No problem. Good? Good.